Right now, uh, the, the team preparing for the family camp, they are preparing like a junior camp. So the, the amount of work they are putting into it is fantastic, which is wonderful. Okay, so they want to plan a sketch, they want to plan this, they want to plan that. 27 kids, right? And those who are involved, maybe they are about over 20. So that's great to see the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of uh, you know, excitement uh, towards the camp, right? And uh, we're really looking forward to that. Now, Sunday school, we've got four classes. So good. Children, not including this class. This is one big class. This is one, and then we began here, then the kids coming, and then we have teachers now, four teachers teaching for class. I think it's just so good to see. Bit by bit, you see growth. Got to see growth, right? Reading Colossians, there got to be growth. In, in our life, there's got to be growth in the church. This is growth. Never the amount of people, but depth, right? Growth in the individual person, growth in, 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 in understanding, like Paul is saying, in wisdom, understanding, in fruitfulness. This is the kind of growth that Paul says, you know what, I thank God. Why? Because it is God who blesses growth. Without God, no growth. Yeah, there's the human effort, yes, but it is God who works in the hearts and the lives of the people, and that we must and should rejoice greatly, deeply. Okay, so looking forward to all the things that we can have together um, as a church. Well, may it really be a blessing to our hearts because we are going to choose to uh, you know, be part of it, participate in it, and benefit from it. Okay, is this on? Or, or on? Uh, you can hear me, right? Or you were just not hearing this one. Okay, well, we are ready to begin. Uh, we are ready in chapter 4 now. And uh, chapter 4 is really interesting. Okay, well, let's pray together for a while. Our Father, we thank you for so many things that we have. Our faith, the provision of your word, the wisdom that we can have, the counsel that is given for life, for ministry, and the power to fulfill we pray that these are things we will not take for granted, but to be greatly challenged to grow further, deeper, wiser with every passing year for ourselves. And as we see the church progress, our hearts are gladdened. We pray that you would bless this morning's Sunday school. We pray for all the teachers upstairs, ministering, learning, lessons, for themselves, as well as learning how to minister to children. We pray for those Sunday school teachers. We pray that you would bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now let's take a look at chapter 4. Okay, chapter 4 would tell you a very interesting... Now, chapter 4, verse 1, actually belongs to chapter 3. Okay, we must remember that when Paul Wright wrote his letter, he did not include chapters. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. This is all done by translators. Okay? For whatever reason, the translator uh, put chapter 4, 1 as where, where it is, which is, makes no sense. It should be chapter 3, verse 26. That would be better because it fits in, you see. Right? Let's take a look at chapter 4, 1. And then begin a new division. Then I understand. Okay, now this is not going to change the way... That means the Bible is full of errors. Of course not. Right? Okay, that means the Bible is, uh, you know, cannot be trusted. Of course not. Okay, this is his divisions of the scriptures. The meaning is still there. You ignore all the chapters, you still read it. Okay? Put it this way. 
Same thing with the Old Testament. Okay, so Isaiah, many chapters, yeah? no chapters, no verse. Remember this, Jesus took it and then found the passage where he talks about the Spirit of the Lord God upon him. Wow, boy, how do you... You know, we got chapters and we still cannot find it. <laughs> where, where is the Bible? Where is it? Yeah, that is amazing. Familiarity with the Scriptures. Right? Which is wonderful. That at the Bible camp, we will be learning, you know, how can we really love the Lord's Word? Really love the Lord's Word. This is something really have to be cultivated. Okay? Right? They tell me, bitter God is a cultivated taste. Hi. That one, no need to cultivate. I just cannot cultivate it. But Bible, yes. This one has really bl uh, wonderful blessings where we cultivate. Uh, let's take a look at this, uh, looking at it very, very carefully. Right? Ver chapter 4, verse 1. Masters, give your bond servants what is just and fair knowing that you also have a master in, uh, right, in heaven. Okay, this belongs to chapter 3. What is chapter 3 about? Okay, chapter 3 begins, let's go back to chapter 3, right? Very, very quickly, this is review. Chapter 3, you're right, if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Right? What are those things? Why right? to be spiritually minded? You know, seek those things. Right? Spiritual, of course, which are above. Just tells us spiritual. He's not asking you to think about heaven all the time. That's not what it is. Heaven should be in our heart. It is an assurance. Yes. But he's not. Just think about heaven all the time. Why? When can I go home to be with you, Lord? When? Uh, when? And he's not. Okay, let's read it properly, correctly. And then we would see this. Okay, you, right? And then he says to them, right, where Christ says, Set your mind, there you go, on the things above, not on the things on this earth. Right? What does that mean? Spiritual or worldly? Do we have spiritual wisdom or worldly wisdom? Not the same thing. That's what it is. How do we live this life on earth? With what wisdom? Now, even among Christians, worldly wisdom. And sometimes people say, why you got spiritual wisdom, but no practical relevance? If you're so spiritual, you're not practical. Now, Paul will prove you wrong. <laughs> yeah. He literally applies it to family, to your life, to very practical. It's a question of what wisdom you possess. And whatever wisdom you possess, that's the only way you know how to make decisions, do things. With what wisdom? Proverbs tells us, wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get wisdom. And of course that wisdom has to do with not worldly wisdom, but godly wisdom, spiritual wisdom. Wisdom from on high. James tells us, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Right? And then he distinguished between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. We need this. If we are truly people who have been regenerated, raised with Christ, right? We celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we apply that truth? We are raised with. What do we want to seek? Your mind. Spiritual wisdom. And the source of where we get spiritual wisdom is, of course, from the Lord's Word. You are not going to find spiritual wisdom in secular books. You're not. Wow, it, the analogy looks great. Yeah, great, but still not wisdom from God. By the way, you're not going to find wisdom just by reading books either. Proverbs is a fantastic example of 
trying to tell people what wisdom is. It does not come merely through just reading. God gives wisdom and He will give it to those who will seek it. Wisdom personified, I love those who love me and those who search for me will find me. That's why we were talk, encouraging people to love the Lord's Word. If you don't search the Lord's Word with a heart of love for wisdom, you never find it. It's a closed book to you. How can wisdom be applied in marriage? Chapter 3, right? Marriage. In life, how shall I live my life? Character, well, how shall I live it? Look, it will change your life. Look at chapter 3. See, it changes the person in the way they put to death that which is, verse 5, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness. Wow, our covetousness is compared with idolatry. We often think covetousness, small sin. Ah, not so small if you compare it with idolatry. There's one sin that brought the entire nation down that comes up again. It took 70 years in captivity to rid them of this sin is idolatry. Covetousness is compared with it. Right? You're never satisfied. Oh, you have a car, what a bigger car. A house, what are these words? Just never satisfied. There is no satisfaction. This is the word desire. The desire for material possession is like a bottomless pit. You can never fill it and you will never be happy. Never satisfied. You can't. Right? You just won't. That is, many are caught up with these things. Is that godly wisdom? No. That's the wisdom of the world. There's the difference. Now, we go on to look at these things here, right? Of course, uh, he tells them, put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice. See, this is changing your life. The wisdom of God will change your life. This is not wise. This is hurtful. This will really no, ruin relationships. I've got to put it off. See, godly wisdom. We're not just talking salvation here. We're talking how you live your life. With what wisdom? And then, of course, this part of it, he's verse 16. Why, why do I say this is wisdom? Read this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. This is how, this is how that wisdom can come when we, as it were, let the word of the Lord dwell in us richly. I think that's the problem. We don't let the word of the Lord dwell in us richly. We oh, are yeah, hearing, okay, I understand it. Okay, I'm got, gone. It doesn't dwell. It doesn't reside. Right? And so when it doesn't, wisdom doesn't come either. Proverbs 2, when wisdom enters the heart, knowledge is pleasant to the soul. Wisdom has got to penetrate to the very core of our being. Not just, okay, I understand now. Does it change your life? It hasn't, it hasn't entered your life. It hasn't entered your heart. It's not pleasant to you. Right now, let's take a look at this. So he, this is the crux of it. Now, how can I apply this? In your marriage, wives, Husband were addressed. In family life, uh, right? Parents and then children, family life. We need wisdom. Parents need wisdom. Definitely, I'll be the first to tell you, I pursue wisdom. One big part is because I'm a father, I'm a parent. I pursue it for many reasons. One of them, is to be a better husband. Yes, 
You think I'm a great husband? I don't know what you think, but I don't. I got to be a better husband, wise. Right? And mine is other people, what other people say about me and what I think about myself, not the same very often. I I can can, can be a better servant of God. I've got to communicate better. Got to know the Lord's word far better than this. That's my (laughs) agony. (laughs) Lord, you got to help me. That's a challenge. My constant challenge to grow is nobody's challenging me. I challenge myself all the time. Every Sunday message I put the challenge is to challenge. Come on, this word is challenging me. Right? To be a better father. To be a better son. Right? Children, obey, honor your parents. I gotta be a better son. I learn sonship. So, what am I? I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband, hey, all here. What do I need? Wisdom. I've seen the damage done to those who lack wisdom. I wanna walk that path though. That would be foolishness. And when we don't get, how come, how come? Don't blame God. There was a lack of wisdom. How come God never heard my prayer? How come God didn't? How come? God is not your servant. He is not your vending machine. There is a lack of wisdom very often. So chapter 3 is vital. Right? Now, this one, how about those who, very hard for us to understand this because we don't have this problem today. But in the days of Paul, it was, a, it was part of the life there. They were slaves. Literally. Okay? Maids, domestic servants get paid. Okay? These ones do not. So that's why it's very hard for us to understand it. They don't get paid. They work till they die. How do you apply faith if you live a life like that? Well, Paul... Some of them must have become Christians. And so Paul says to them, right? He didn't tell, Paul didn't say, Paul prayed to them, start a revolution. Paul didn't tell them to go and pray against their masters, kill them in their sleep. He didn't. Take away my problems. Make me, uh, you know, make me not a slave anymore. He didn't. Watch what he says. This is interesting. Bond servants. Wow, that's slaves. Obey in all things your master according to the flesh. You know what? You practice obedience even more. What? This one abuses me. This one hits me. This one underfeeds me. Obey in all things according to the flesh. Not with eye service as men pleases but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. Wow, that is a real challenge to practice your faith. Very hard to imagine, right? And whatever you do, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not to man. Do it with joy, with thanksgiving. Wow, as to the Lord. Let the Lord be your motivation. Right? Sometimes you, 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 when I hear people complain about their work, really? You get, at least you get paid, you know. You know, I go and build or got a nasty environment. How nasty can it get compared to this? And yet, do it heartedly as to the Lord. This is, to me, the worst. There is not workers' calm, no superannuation, no salary even. You are bought, you are abused verbally, physically, every day for the rest of your life. How to live? There's your difference between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. Ah, that is a challenge. Can faith rise above? Can faith transcend? What is naturally you? That's what it was meant to be. And of course, one of them was this one called Onesimus. You should read about Philemon, the letter to 
he became a Christian. Now, very rare, Paul called my son. This guy became a son to him, a slave, a son. He changed. Once upon a time, he was that slave that, you know, he couldn't steal his master thing and ran away. Of course, right? There we go. He got caught, he's dead. And he was got caught. He got caught, thrown into Roman's prison and met Paul, met the right person. He came to faith in Jesus. His life changed. And so Paul wrote to Philemon, will you take him back, not just as a slave, but as a son? Right? That is, a, is it possible to practice our faith like this? And that's a challenge. It really is a challenge. Okay? And then he tells them, now, to those who are masters or owners of servant, okay, knowing that from the Lord you will receive a reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Now, that is a wonderful focus here. You serve the Lord. Your inheritance is not of the material kind of this world. Even if your earthly master would never give you anything, you have an eternal inheritance. The Lord will honour you. You live out your faith here on this earth. Okay, well, look at this. Very, very wonderful. But he who does wrong will repa be repaid for what he has done. There is no partiality, right? With God, there's no partiality. Okay, you're a Christian, you're a slave, you go and steal something, you get punished for it. How come God didn't deliver me? No, you did wrong. Right? Some people think they are Christian, they're invincible. I can do this, God will not punish me anymore. Mistake. God is impartial. Right? You get, you get do th wrong things, you're going to get wrong things back. Right? God is not partial. Well, and then you know, one crazy fellow said, okay, I'm going to sin all I like. At the end, before I die, I cry out to the grace of God and I'll be forgiven and I'll enter heaven. That is a very crazy idea. Only, only a person who is not saved can come up with an idea like that, to be honest with you. A person who is saved will never come up with a thought like that. How can he? How can they? You just imagine your son do that to you, Right? When, you are, when they are, okay, I'm going to take all, spend all your money, abuse you, do everything. And then when he's about to spend everything, he's about to die. Oh, Father, forgive me. Receive me back now. What's wrong with you? It doesn't work like that. Right? There are people who preach, God, I just heard this recently. Healing. It's your right as Christian to claim healing from God. <sighs> If you teach your children such things, son, it is your right to claim whatever you want. Would you teach your children that? Claim. Make claims on you. Well, I like your house, dad. Give it to me. Well, I like your car. Give it to me. I like your bank account. Give that to me too. It's your right. What kind of crazy idea is that? That is so false. That is so wrong. That is absolutely wrong. None other by this person called Joseph Prince of New Creation Church said that. I was startled. I said, you serious? See, the Old Testament, see, repentance is the Old Testament. New Testament never teach repentance. Serious? You never read the New Testament or what? And this guy goes around with 10,000 followers, oh, I don't know what is that. I mean, he can say whatever he wants. If he can make crazy remarks like that, he can make all kinds of crazy remarks. And I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. Right? And, and this is so important to us. God, there is no partiality. You do wrong. You do wrong things. It will, you will be repaid for it. This is why wisdom is so important. Please, wisely so, right? Okay, now, chapter 4 addresses, see how nicely chapter 4, 1 is meant to be part of chapter 3 now? Makes no sense why it was in chapter 4. Okay, and after that you read this part, and then he says, Masters, give your bond servants, Christians, 
who are owners of slaves, you know what? Do give to them. Even though they don't, you know, it's not part of the contract. Masters don't need to give anything to their slaves, you know. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing. But you know what? You do it because it is just and fair knowing you have a master in heaven. Wow. Appreciate that. Do that which is just and fair. And that is an important word. That's wisdom. What is wisdom? Justice. What is wisdom? Righteousness. What is wisdom? Goodness. What is wisdom? Uprightness. That's wisdom. Right? You read Proverbs 11, 12, 13. Wisdom and righteousness is seen in righteousness. Okay? And, and this is important now. That ends chapter 3, actually. <laughs> chapter 4 is a uh, new division here. is a call to pray. Right? So our faith is relevant, is practiced in practical life, spiritual wisdom. And the wisdom in the church as believers, what are we committed to? Not just prayer. Praying for what? Now, let's just take a look at this. So, we are to pray. Continue in prayer. Now, this is the part. The call to pray. This is a church community. What is our goal? What is Practice this. What is our wisdom? Not... The wisdom is not, let's do this, let's do this, let's raise funds here, let's... What is the wisdom? Cultivate prayer. Continue in prayer. Encourage prayer. Call people to pray. Teach prayer. Pray. It's Paul. Again, applying wisdom. Right? And so he tells them, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant. Now, look at these words. One is continue. Wow, but I prayed already. It will tell you we give up after, when we don't see result, we give up. Oh, you pray, oh, hang on, no result, give up. We stop praying. But we pray half-hearted prayer. We don't even know when will God answer. The challenge is to pray earnestly. The challenge is to pray with vigilance. What's vigilance? Right? You are watchful. You are attentive. You are not sleepy, not tired. See, sometimes prayers, you're, you're, you pray and you fall asleep. Oh my God, I prayed already. <laughs> prayer is not... A, okay, is, I said it already, right? You're happy, right? And okay, now God will hear me. No! How are you praying? With verga, with watchfulness, with understanding, you have... This is the challenge, the call to pray. With thanks... Look at this here. With thanksgiving. What is our spirit of prayer? Thanksgiving. Many things to thank God. Thank God we can pray. Romans 5, we, because of our faith, because we are justified, right? We have access to God. In, we stand upon this grace. Thank God. We can enter into the throne of God, into the, this is called the throne of grace and mercy. We can find mercy, obtain grace. Thank God. He is our mediator, our high priest, whoever lives to intercede for us. Thank God. You know, we enter into prayer, we should be with thankfulness. That we are His children. Thankful. Right? Not with wrath, not with doubting. But with thankfulness in our hearts. That is how we ought to pray. With, with what? With thanksgiving. You see, people pray, yeah, it's just, wow. It's like a shopping list kind of prayer. 
All right. Uh, okay, let's pray for Uncle Henry. Let's pray for Auntie Mary. Let's pray for this. Let's pray for... Oh, you forgot. Forgot Pastor Chris. Okay, put it. Not that I want to be in your shopping list of any sort, but that's not what prayer is. A shopping list. And you said it to God. Now, God, go shopping. It isn't. It really isn't. With thanksgiving. Paul practiced it as he remembered the Colossians and their love for all the saints. You know what? His heart filled with thanksgiving. When was the last time we prayed with thanksgiving? Really, I thank God for the four up there teaching the young, the new gen, the children. Thank God, thank God. Somebody answered the call. Right? It's so easy. I pray for you, but you rise up. Young one says, you know what? I heard you six years ago, and I've been reading myself, learning. I want to learn. I want to grow. One day, would the Lord call me to also be part of uh, ministry? Right? If you got children, but you got nobody to teach it, also gone. I thank God. Right? I thank God. One father responded to the message. Well, I, I gave a word that was a little bit strong on hindsight looking at it. I said, you know, parents, I'm going to challenge you. Don't just bring your children to, to the camp. Be there! One father responded. He said, wow, Pastor Chris, message rebuked me. Okay, I am going to take leave and I'm going to be there. Good for you. He's very happy. Be there full time. Be there if you can. Be there. Possible. Just be there. Well, one father did. Why not? We plan for everything under the sun anyway. Right? And so this is a good and wholesome response. Thank God. One response. Thank God. Right? So keep on seeing this while Lino is becoming a very, very committed, godly father. So I saw a beautiful picture that you know, sent over to the family WhatsApp of Lino reading the Bible to the little Joseph. Right. Thank God. Not that the boy... Yeah, wow, look at that. That's good, wonderful bonding time. Hmm? You never know what he understands. He just... He looks good. He was staring at the thing. Right. Thank God. You're going to be a godly father? Thank God. Praying for, praying for this one. Praying for that one. Thank God. Right? That's what it is. There's much to thank God for. Thanksgiving. Isn't it? Verse 3. Meanwhile, huh, meanwhile, while you're praying, pray also for us. That's Paul. You see, he believes in prayer. And he's asking the church to pray, to be vigilant, to be watchful, to be committed. Pray. Pray for what? Look at this. Pray that God would open to us a door for the Word. This is very specific. Would God open the door? Now, this week has been really interesting how um, Kath invited me to a Bible study that his uh, uh, aged care organized. This is the second day one. Day, second week, sorry. And so, run by this lady. And I was there, not to officiate anything. I was just, just be there. She said, could, could you... You see, they were organizing this Bible study and they don't know what to, how to go about it. And so Kath put up a hand. Can I, can I just have a suggestion? I have a friend who could, uh, uh, you know, teach the Bible a little bit. Can I ask him to come? And they said, yeah, please. And so I went. Ten of them. I thought, wow, this is it. And, and every single one above 80, you know. Yeah, not only open door, open ears. <laughs> it is. How does it? You know what? It was such a wonderful experience. They were asking me, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? Huh? People have been going to church all their life and say, 
oh, this is something nagging me. Oh, I had a wonderful time sharing with them what the Passover means, what is the, what, why, what is the whole idea of the triumphant entry, or Easter. Really wonderful time. Sharing about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Passover lamb. And how does that apply to us? You know, John 14 came to heart and mind. And it was one hour with them. And then as, I, as we left, one of them came up. He's a pastor, ex-pastor, retired, of course. And he was just so happy. He said, thank you so much. I was really challenged. He's lost pretty much a lot of his hearing, but he's just, whatever he heard was just uplifted. Just want to hang on to his faith with all he's got. Just want to remain faithful. Husband and wife. He's 90 plus. Wow. 90 plus. Next to me is 90 plus. Of course, the oldest is Kev, still holding the title. <laughs> you know, so far, nobody is, is. She's the senior person there. But she's the senior. The rest is 90. <coughs> 80, you're a junior. Why are you so young? I'm, so I'm like, wow, I'm a baby compared to, in terms of age. Hanum can be my great-grandparent, you know. Great, grand. So what am I doing? So I just quietly, okay, you want to share? So, right, uh, you share something, you share something. When it came to me, can you share something? Uh, yes. Can I just share with you? Wow, this is what the Lord's Word say. Can I share with you about the... It just uplift. One hour just passed by just like that. I'm going to ask you to... They asked me to go back, you know. Can you please come back next week? Wow, 90 year olds, and, and you don't know when. You know, I go back, maybe we'll be missing a few. You don't know when the Lord is going to call somebody home. One's from Holland, one's from all different places, South Africa, this lady, a whole group of them, 10. Can we pray that the Lord will open doors for us? Yes, this is an open door. Pray. The church was never meant to just be by itself. Let's just look after ourselves. The church was meant, always meant to be missionary-minded. Reach out to the world. Be that light on that hill to the world. Be that salt to the world. Bear witness of me to the ends of the earth. Oh, you know, let's just, just, just you know, I care for my family, I care for myself, I care for... That's it. We can become very myopic if we are we're not careful. The church was always meant to be mission-minded. The world. Can we? Let's reach other people. Wow, I'm, 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 this is very exciting. I a, well, as you had a rest this week, no Bible study, no prayer meeting. I had a wonderful time. I had a rest too, sharing the gospel. No, no actual uh, formal meetings, but many, many other meetings. Meeting with this couple that don't know the Lord, sharing the gospel. One's a Buddhist. Okay, sharing the gospel, helping them to understand the dif difference between Buddhism and Christianity. Of course, because she said to me, Buddhism, Christianity, all the same. After the sessions over, wow, not the same. At least you see the difference and wonderful difference too. But you choose. Right, with this, other, with this other person. How relevant is the Word of God, the Gospel, to your life in times of pain and problem? How relevant is the Word of God in your life to a couple who is planning to consider marriage? How relevant is the Word of God to those who are in the evening years of their life? Pray earnestly. And pray for us. Pray for us that God, that's the word, God would open to us a door. He is not asking God to open the door of his prison, you know. Right? He is not. Okay? Because he is in prison. Because he said, I speak. Right? He is in his chains, which I am also in my chain. Make mention, uh, make many. You know what? His greatest, in, he is in suffering, you know, in prison. 
And his greatest concern is not for himself, but the word of God. The op- the, the, a door will be open, an opportunity will be open, hearts will be open that the word. And he's praying, even as he speaks, to make manifest, to reveal, to explain that people can see for themselves the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. See, what are we praying for? Really praying for? Do we forget? Right, evolves off. Can we bring out our difficulties, our problems in life to God? Yes, we can. But are we praying for open doors? That God would open a door to us. Who knows? Why God planted us here to be right in Milford Street? Right, nursing home nearby, who knows? Maybe a school nearby, we don't know. One part, one, please, let there be spiritual wisdom. When a church is spiritually wise, there is knowledge, understanding, there's the wisdom of the Lord living it out. Then there's an opportunity that God could open doors for us to bring that wisdom to the world, to people. And when the world, when the church is just filled with the wisdom of themselves, God is not going to open doors. What for? Bring more harm. Right? Why well, look at the church? The same as the world. What do you learn? Corporate stuff. What do you learn? How to be a leader like the corporate world? Why? Motivation, philosophy, everything but Christ. Will God open doors for you? You may open your own doors. It's not from God. You want God to open doors? Please be. We, let's be that. This is why He is you know, teaching, He is encouraging, He is seek as you are raised with Christ. Seek your mind. What is your mind? Wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom. And even as you sing, now, this has to include singing. Watch this part of it, right? Chapter 3, verse 16, remember? Teaching, admonishing. That's how wisdom can come. Uh, right? And one another. Teaching and morning. One another. Psalms. Okay? If you come for our prayer meeting, we're reading Psalms. Many wonderful Psalms. Now we are in the uh, Asaphic Psalm. The Psalms of Asaph. Really challenging Psalms to read. I'm used to David Psalms. Asaphic Psalms are a little bit different. Quite puzzling. Right? There's difference, you know. You want to read the Psalm all the same. Different. Some, you tell, this is not David's psalm. He doesn't have his uh, style of writing there. So you're familiar until you can pick it up. This is not David. This, this is somebody else's. This is Asaph's. Right? These are the sons of Korah. Differences. Right? The wisdom that is there. Hymns, spiritual song, singing. With grace in your heart to the Lord. And this is where this is where Bethel can really do better. Really, right now, the singing could improve quite a bit. Right? And we're gonna try. Don't wait for camp to improve. Improve now. You know what? We want to sing. This is the wisdom of the Lord that is there that is true, that is alive in the church community. But of course, the people are new people, they come, wow, these people really sing. These people really believe what they sing. Are they uh, tired, you know, praying, not vigilant, sleepy. Singing, also sleepy. Everything, also sleepy. <sighs> What's happening? Are you sure you've been raised with Christ? Maybe not this morning. (laughs) Right? Raised means there is a life. 
there is a sense of energy and life that is from the Lord that is inside you. The power of His resurrection. You're right? So I'm really planning this at the camp. We're going to remove all the side pews. You just got only center pews. Why? I will guarantee you this. If we didn't have the side, everybody would sit like you. Like they're all far. <laughs> Even though they are only, uh, I know, right? Uh, 80 people coming for camp, uh, 20, all up 111. But adults is really about 80 plus. You all, wow, one, one there, one there, one there. And let's sing to the Lord. <laughs> all right. How do you do that? Okay, so I have, you have left me with no choice <laughs> but to restrict you <laughs> where you sit. Short of putting, okay, let's see how it goes. Watch, I tell you, same thing will happen. Even though I only need two pills, you all sit at the back. <laughs> then I'll remove the back pills too. <laughs> Until you, see, this is why the Lord said to, so it's, don't kick against the goat. It's not going to work. <laughs> until you have to be like, shepherd until you. See, shepherd work, you know. All right, nicely now. Okay. Ready to sing? Sure, physically there, but the heart, not grace. Not thanksgiving. Why like that? This is so restrictive. I changed church. It can happen. Right? Okay, well, look at this wonderful singing hymn with grace in your heart to the Lord. At this morning at pre-worship, you know, I said to Aldin, how come this song is here? I never knew. I just learned this song and I was just so deeply challenged by it. I said, can I, yeah, can we get a group of people to sing this so I don't feel like I'm the only person singing this song? We've got to try and teach this to the church. It's called complete in, Christ, complete in Thee, Complete in Christ. And so Eldin said, the choir heard it, they don't like it. Ha, huh, okay, I've got to introduce it. I'm gonna, this is called reintroducing. Why it can be liked. It's a beautiful song that fits into the whole idea of being complete in Christ. How we are justified, how we are sanctified, how we are glorified, complete in Christ. That wonderful, I, I sang last night. I sang again this morning. Complete in thee. What a glorious thought. With grace in my heart. That's the grace that I have received. No work of mine. I did not complete myself. Christ gave me everything. My salvation is fully assured. It is fully certain. I cannot add one more to it. I cannot take. It is finished. How wonderful that is. Totally, fully assured. And that's my actual challenge to bring to the HK home. And to help them to find that full assurance in the Lord. Right, right now, the, the Bible study came from the, came from the residents. They're Christians, a group of them. And they just, they can't go to church anymore for obvious reasons, right? And they cannot stand the chaplain because the chaplain does not teach the Word of God. Sorry to say, sad to say. They said, we need, this is in their words, we need something more than what this chaplain gives to us. Wow. They really want to hear the Lord's Word. Is this an open door? Perhaps. This is what we are praying, that God will open doors wherever it is. But is the church ready? Are we going to seek the things that are above? You see it in the lives of the people. You see it in the lives of the family. You see it in their heart, in their life, in their work. Spiritual wisdom. There's wisdom there. And who could put it there? God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom. Okay, what? Well, any questions you want to raise up? I, I thought I would help us to apply this. Okay, this is really about spiritual wisdom. Wendy, yeah, you want to have a mic for Wendy, so it's being recorded. Uh, others can benefit from your questions.
Okay, we we prepare uh, mics like that for all the Sunday school because it's good to have this interaction. Okay, all right, go ahead, Wendy. Pastor, I want to ask, um, like, you know how some, I heard from a friend, so mm. h- how they have, like, prayer requests, mm. so I don't know how it comes to them. They wouldn't know who the pers- people are. It's just random. So they will have, like, a, a, um, random. Like a stack of prayer requests where mm. they are all asked to pray, pray, mm. pray for. So um, it's, it's like a regular thing. Right. So, it, it, so right. I asked, Who so gives do you the know, prayer requests? Um, so people from their church members, right. okay. can they, say, they will say something yeah. like, oh, okay. I have a friend who okay. is sick. Can you pray right. for okay. healing okay. or pray for... Okay. So um, I don't know how it works because yeah. they don't, I don't actually... Know, I don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, let's... <laughs> when Paul... This is a prayer request. You want to see a prayer request? This. It is not done like Secret Santa style. Who's this person? I don't know. You know, just go and buy a $5 present. It is not. Okay, let's. When Paul says, pray for us, chapter one, what did he do? He tells you who he is. Like, a bit of an intro, chapter one. He's, this is Paul, this is his ministry, right? This is what he's going through, right? Suffering for the sake of the gospel. This is the areas. Let's know the person. You need to know the person. You need to know the circumstances. You need to know the context. And then that prayer request is meaningful. Right? So this is what what we talk about, prayer requests. It is never, I write on a piece of paper, okay, okay, you all, you all pray. And then see, hallelujah, the church is praying. You have no know the person from Adam. How can you be vigilant when you don't know the person? It is not magical words. It is a community engaged. This is why we have prayer meetings. One, to teach. That's the biggest thing, to teach. Not just to pray, because you may be praying wrong. Come for Bible study, and we will talk about prayer, because Paul talks about lifting up holy hands. What does that mean? I'll explain that. Only if you come for Bible study. (laughs) Sure. There are a lot of people are lifting up hands. They don't know what they're doing. You can end up sinning against God, and you also don't know. You have no clue what they're doing. You see people do, watch, I'm guilty of this. In the past, when I didn't know the Lord, I was seeking, I went to all kinds of churches. I went to Roman Catholic Church, I watched people do what they do. I follow. I see them, before they enter, they dip their hand into that, that thing there, water there, and put, and, and curtsy. I did the same. And then one day I looked at the water, you got algae. Just don't dip too much. Oh, just don't dip at all. I have no clue what I was doing. Tell us, what am I doing? You don't know. Good question. If somebody comes to church and asks you, what are you doing? Do you know? I said, no, no. I've been coming to this church the last 10 years. I don't know what I'm doing. Why do you read the Bible? Good question. Maybe you ask Pastor Chris. Come on. Right? What is a prayer request? It really, in the most logical, this is why wisdom is needed, Wendy. You just confirmed it for us all. You're right. Is there any wisdom to request random? Random requests? I don't know who are you. Who are you praying for? Prayers are never done in general, generality. A pronouncement of blessing, perhaps, but never specific. You know, the the benediction I give to you could be for all. But this one is personal. 
This one is private. Now, there are people who come, Pastor Grace, can you pray alongside? Very, very specifically, I know the family, I know them, I know the difficulties they're going through. Of course, the prayer will be very, very different. And this is not going to be, I'm not going to take whatever they tell me, usually confidential, and write down and give it to Uncle SD. Pray the request, you don't know this person, but pray. So, hey, what's, who's this? He'll be wondering what's wrong with me doesn't work like that. So how do I understand that? I don't understand that. We do not practice such prayer requests. Remember, no shopping list that kind. Let's pray for the machine gun. Sure hit something, right? If you fire like that. Doesn't work. Right? And not pray louder. God will hear. God is not deaf. You may be, but he is not. Right? So we, we got a lot to learn. See, you never come prayer meeting. This is why we have all crazy stuff surfacing. Let's learn the right lessons. Let's learn what it means to pray. You see, even as he talked to the Colossian church, there's an understanding they all know what they're doing. Because they do know what they're doing. The church today don't know what on earth. Where do you get that from? There are some really crazy things out there, you know, in, everywhere. From time to time, you see them. And you just say, wow, how did that come? Okay, does that make sense to you? No, no, no. Can we have prayer requests? Yes. But this is where the church keeps in touch with each other all the time. Why did Paul write to them such a long letter, talking about Ephesus? Obviously, he knows them. He's never seen them before. Maybe, never face to face, he just said, right? But through Ephorus, he didn't find the Colossians church. He's not the founder. He's confident that they are complete and they will do well. Not because Paul is the pastor, but because Christ is the head. That's important. How can every church succeed when Christ is the head? It's not about, okay, Paul's the pastor, therefore this church will do well. It's not about that. Of course, if you have a good pastor there, it helps, like Ephorus, faithful. you got a false teacher there, you're dead. But it will do well because Christ is the head. Right? Write about these things. Talk about these things. There's an understanding about these things there. Now, we pray. So, we are all in touch. Never random. Anytime you see people doing random things, it is not of the Lord. It is not. Okay? If they speak randomly, that's not of the Lord. It's the, of their own doing. Human beings are random. God isn't. He's logical. Wisdom will tell you... <laughs> wisdom will tell you no randomness, please. This is carefully thought out. You insult God. God plans. God's purposes in His heart. God is one who looks into the details of everything. Read Genesis. How he made man. How he planned salvation. Look, can you imagine if God made the world randomly? Hey, we will be... Well, how come my ear isn't here? And all over the place. Fearfully, wonderfully made. So anytime we hear things like that, now, is it consistent with the person of God? This is how you check. Is it consistent with the person of God? Is it consistent with the Word of God? Word of God and the person of God together. And you've got to always check all the time. When did they come up? Where did they come up with such theology? Who knows? Convenient. I right, 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 right. I'll distribute. Secret Santa style. Do something nice, specific. Right? I don't care much for Secret Santa, to be honest with you. It's nice to plan something. Really something special. You understand the person. It reflects you as the giver and the person who is the receiver. Secret Santa is only for corporate parties. You don't know what to do. Anymore. Just anyhow, like five bucks. Yeah. Just anyhow, pick random give. Oh, yeah, another toothbrush. <gasps> Please don't treat prayer like that. Okay? Does that make sense to you? 
Good, I, I'm glad you raised that up. That would help us all. Okay, we don't practice random prayers, right? Please don't. If you do, cease. Hopefully she didn't hear it from you. Okay, don't do things. I do not hand out pieces of paper to the congregation and pray for this person, pray for this. I announce who this person is. Okay, only if the person wants us. Some sensitive, we don't even do that. We just pray on our own. Okay? Not everybody that tells me their problem, I'll make a public announcement. Of course not, because this person could feel, no, it is, I, I, I don't know the people at church. I don't know who every, anyone is. We don't. Even if I give you the name, who is that? Right? Now, if I say, uh, Pastor Titus, you know who he is, right? Well, he just sent a WhatsApp and he's just saying, thank you for praying for me and my wife. He's yesterday, baby boy. Call Sam Benjamin. Wow. Samuel Benjamin. So he's, that's the joy of a baby boy. Now, in India, they cannot tell the, the gender of the baby. They are not allowed. Legally, they're forbidden. So whatever comes, then, you know, whether it comes, is surprise. So he's a baby boy. Of course, they are happy like anything. Parents will be happy like anything. To them, boy is a big thing in India. Right? To us, well, not so, not so. But India, very important. First one must be boy. Right? If girl, oh, it must give diary. Sorry, they, it's how they think. Right? But there we go, just rejoicing with him. Not that he thinks like that, okay? I'm just saying idiot. But... He's just happy. Well, thank God for that. That makes sense. Can we pray for him? Yes. Sujita has a back problem, so we were just concerned for her. Right? She has a back problem. She's always had that back problem. So how are you going to give birth with a back problem? Well, thank God there's a healthy baby, there's a healthy mummy, right? And, and just thank God with thanksgiving in our heart. Right? He just wants to say, can you please tell uh, the brethren who who are back home. And thank God for that. The sense of fellowship, the in touch with each other. This is why we keep everybody in touch all the time with each other. Otherwise, when it comes to prayer, you don't know who is who, what is what. Right? Let's be in touch with each other. Let's be in the know. Not gossip, okay? Gossip is a different thing. Just in touch with each other. You know, just let's just pray for one another. Okay? All right? Well, may we really, chapter 3, set our minds. Chapter 4, call to prayer. Together, right, with reference to spiritual wisdom. Let us be, seek this wisdom from above of the Lord. We need it in our life, in our ministry, every part. Okay, well, thanks, Wendy, for that question. Appreciate it. Okay, well, let's pray together. Our Father, we Thank you for the wisdom we can find from your word. Well, we pray that you would help us, correct us, cleanse us from wrong ideas, wrong practices, that we may walk worthy of the truth, of the light of the Lord. We ask that you would help us to grow in wisdom and understanding. Give to us this wisdom that we need for life, for ministry. Bless us as we prepare our hearts for worship, Help us to sing together as a church. Sing with grace in our heart to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, let's look forward to worship. I am looking forward to pre-worship. Please come a little earlier. Then we can teach this song to you, and that way we can sing it, okay? All right.